and community turnover at local, regional, and continental scales. And he does this for birds and mammals. And he's currently a researcher at NCBS, Bangalore. He's a team member of the Mammals of India website and is a vast, uh, and is a, and which is a vast project that draws upon the expertise of a large number of naturalists and mammologists. It's a public site uh, that gathers information and publishes it on the website. Uh, over to you, Vivek. Uh, let's play the presentation. Hello, everyone. Hello. Mammals of India is a crowdsourced online platform on Indian mammals. It's part of the Biodiversity Atlas India websites and is hosted at the National Center for Biological Sciences, Bangalore. Today, I'm going to give a brief introduction to the web platform, its key features, and how we can contribute to its growth. This website offers a platform on which to organize all the available information in a free and user-friendly format. We hope that this will make basic information freely available to any mammal enthusiast and also help cater to the research needs of the community. We currently have images from 194 mammal species reported from India. This is close to 45% of our mammalian diversity, with 2,300 plus images from 6,000 odd unique visitors our image catalog has been growing steadily. And we hope that after seeing the features of the website, many of you will also contribute to this website. Key features of our platform are that we are the most up-to-date systematic online catalog of Indian mammals that is arranged taxonomically. We also provide summaries of the natural history of Indian mammals online for free, which include information on identification, distribution, status, habitat, habits, etc. Animals can be searched for in one of three ways. The easiest way to reach a species page is to click through the taxonomic ranking given in the species tree on the left column of the website. This way, you can also see related taxonomic categories that you may want to explore. In this example, I am interested in deer. I click on Artiodactyla and then survey day. I get to the page with all the genus of deer that are found in India. From here, I can click on individual images to access the species pages of interest. Another way to get to the species of interest is to use the search bar. Here, we can search by life stage, photographer, name of animal, location, etc. Here, I have looked for my images of macaca. Since I have only contributed a lion tail macaque photo, it shows up. And if I click on it, it takes me to the species page with details on the species and its images. Notice the species tree on the left has also been updated to the current genus and species. The distribution tab shows where the images contributed come from on the map with individual locations listed below. Details like the IUCN status is displayed prominently and the status habitat and habits tab give basic information about the species. We also have links to other web resources and mammals that the visitor may wish to explore. How can we contribute as individuals? We can contribute our images of mammals. If it's your first time, there is a brief sign-up process. We can also write species accounts and contribute to the species pages. Once we have signed up and logged in, we are greeted with this page. Here, I have photographed an Indian giant squirrel that I want to post. So I enter the genus name, Vatufa, in the taxon search, and then click on Vatufa Indica, the species for which I have an image. You can use the common name too, 
you can also submit an image that you don't know the identification of. Then you enter the date of the observation and other details such as altitude, habitat, notes, etc. But these are optional and can be left blank, but we encourage you to give as much detail as possible. Once the details are filled out, you click on Add Image tab. Navigate to the image on the computer and click on it to upload. Then we click on the Submit Observation button. We get a dialog box that asks us if we want the information to remain for our next observation in case we have similar observations from the same location. Or we can choose to clear the form to submit a new observation. If we scroll down on the same page, we will have to recheck the information of this observation by checking the radio box at the bottom. And this will confirm your observation and submit it. After this, the observation is added to a review queue where our expert reviewers verify the observation and once satisfied with the veracity of the information, they import the observation. Once imported, the observation can now be found on the species page along with the other images of this species. If you click on the image, you will see the metadata such as copyright, identification, location, date, appended to the observation, including a media code, which is a digital object identifier. Clicking on the distribution tab will reveal that a new data point has now been added in central India, corresponding to the location of my observation. I hope this has illustrated how easy it is to contribute your images and information to this indigenous platform. I urge you all to visit www dot mammals of india dot org and explore the resource and i hope you will find it useful and contribute to valuable images and expertise i would like to thank all the contributors and the supporting institutions also the conference organizers for giving us this opportunity thank you Hi, Vivek. Thank Hi. you for that talk. Yeah, it's a very cool initiative. Um, and we will give everyone a couple of minutes to ask questions. It's, there's usually a 30 second lag. So they're probably still watching the video. Can you, uh, in the meantime, uh, maybe summarize uh, taxa that are more popular on this portal? Um, Thank you. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can. OK, yeah. So can you go ahead and uh, talk about some taxa that are more popular on this portal while uh, I get As uh, most of the big mammals are more popular. Uh, so you have tigers and lep leopards, elephants, and also uh, some of the you know mongoose and stuff like that that you can usually see around your, uh, you know, where you around your dwellings in more urban and peri-urban areas. OK. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a few questions coming in. Nishant asks, uh, can it be used on the mobile Mammals of India? No. So we are uh, in the process of developing APIs for all the uh, Biodiversity India, no, the uh, Biodiversity Atlas India portals. So first we're going with, uh, you know, butterflies and odonates, and then later it will slowly roll out to the mammals and the others that we I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ashwin has a question. Wouldn't it make more sense to periodically pull data from INAT and IBP into this platform? So the thing is that uh, it would make sense, but then uh, we would uh, like to have, since uh, we are looking at this being an indigenous effort, so we want to have, own, uh, you know, uh, uh, we want to have uh, ownership of the data in terms of like uh, being able to 
use the data for uh, for uh, our research as well as for having it uh, free for our our users and we prefer that it's hosted at ncbs so hence we have still not thought about getting data from inat or uh, the other sources like biodiversity uh, portal and stuff like that okay sham patyal has two questions for you um are you also considering domestic mammals and which region is less explored in your web page uh northeast like northeast okay. and uh the higher himalayas are less less explored and you no know, domestic animals are not uh, are not there on this and uh, we also do not accept uh, photographs from uh, uh, from zoos and places like that so captive animals are also not accepted i see yeah. i see by which you mean they are actively rejected after submission or yes yeah no so we actually write to them and say that we will not be taking these images because we would like to get uh, accurate distribution maps so then you know you might not be able to do that with uh, a photograph from a zoo okay okay um so i also wanted okay are your data pushed to gbif asks robin not yet but do you have any such plans yeah we are thinking about it so it's again since it's a consortium we need to discuss it with everybody else and then once we have consensus we'll look at pushing it to gbif okay um prabhakar is asking now you have a flood of questions okay prabhakar is asking how long does a submission take to become published uh uh it between 24 to 72 hours because uh, once it goes into the review queue it's about when the reviewer has time to be able to look at the images and then uh, review them and then it can be published so uh, between 24 to 72 hours okay yeah. aditya banerjee has a question are there resolution restrictions for images like in the butterflies website if so does it put, make it potentially difficult uh, to get more submissions no so uh, the thing is that it also uh, th- that's left to the reviewer because if it's a particularly rare mammal then and you know you have a you have a photograph that's been taken through a binoculars if it's cropped close and there are uh, identification features that are visible then it would be accepted so that's left okay. to the reviewer okay um and can you please garima sharma can you please describe the back end of your website how you designed it and what tech tools you used to collect submissions from the public so the thing is that i do not know anything about the back end of the website because i was not involved in that and uh, those are the questions that we have to put to purnendu who actually wrote the uh, code for the website so okay. i can maybe is... get garima uh, in touch with purnendu and krishna great required great krishna meg i believe is uh, at the conference um, sure. so maybe so we then, could tag yeah. him yeah sure. um, i don't know about purnendu Uh, Sham Patel has another question. What about wild animals roaming or sighted within city limits? Of course, they uh, you yeah, get yeah. such kinds yes. of submissions and accept them. Yeah, okay. we do. So that's what. So the see what is the definition of a wild animal? A wild animal can be a squirrel that's there in your back backyard. So yeah, so that's yeah. Um, and Shaunak Modi, a question about data ownership. If NCBS owns the data, does the user give away rights to their photos by uploading it to the website? no so the so the user can use the photos but then on the ncbs or on this website uh, every user is given uh, copyrights for the photograph that they have uh, put up so like for example i in my uh, in the presentation you saw a picture of a uh, of a giant squirrel in which you had a copyright there so you have your copyright displayed uh, prominently so so any end user can do the same yes Yes. so anyone can download Any, images yeah. and use it okay okay um yeah and um, we're still waiting for more questions so can you tell us um do you have like a model for the next 3 5 years beyond which you're going to upload to gbif or you know you said you are considering so the thing is that the model here we are looking at it as being a web based resource for mammals of india so the model now for the next 3 years would be to update each of the individual species pages uh okay. with the natural history information with uh, and you know with more and more pictures coming in it would also give us uh, a better idea about what the contemporary ranges of these species are etc after which okay. we would then uh think of you know linking up with larger global biodiversity data sets okay can you tell us a little bit about the role of curators um on a portal like this and how much work it is to curate because i'm assuming you don't have an ai for species recognition 
no suggestions mm. that pop up when someone uploads an image no so yeah so okay. the thing is that uh, uh, the curators that we have on the website are uh, are experienced naturalists bar biologists who have worked across india so they mm -hmm. have uh, and uh, what we do is that for like each uh, each entry that we get we at least have two or three people have consensus on the identity of the uh, of the photograph before we uh, import it into the website so and all of this process is a private process unlike on i naturalist where you can see consensus and build yeah, consensus yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like all that's that's that is it. a private process yeah okay all right all right that must be an incredible amount of work for the back end so yeah um, so we have a few more questions and it'll be nice if you can um, take them on Slack. Um, we'll surely have more questions piling up over the next two talks. The first speaker always has this, uh, you know, uh, flood that comes in about five, 10 minutes after the talk is done. So thank you, Vivek. Thank you. And, thank you for um, having me. Yeah. Yeah. And Prabhakar, maybe I can hand it over to you.